Hi everybody. A very common thing we want to animate are drop shadows. The friendly blurry things that appear below our elements to give you the illusion of depth and a light source and all the other good things that a drop shadow typically brings with it. So in this video, we'll take a quick look at what it's going to take to animate our drop shadows properly and performantly. So when we think of drop shadows, we typically have been defining them with a box shadow property for a very long time. This property takes a bunch of values, but the most common ones are its horizontal and vertical set, the amount of the shadow you're gonna see, the radius of the shadow, and the color of the shadow itself. Typically, it's often a darker color, but if you wanna create the illusion of a light source, creating a more bright or blur kind of an effect, you can choose a color besides a dark gray. Now, more modern browsers, especially all of the ones by the time you're watching this video, also support the drop shadow filter. Now filters are pretty special in that they are, allow you to create a lot of visual effects to modify how an element looks, and one of those functions happens to be drop shadow, and the way you use drop shadow is identical to box shadow in its most simpler syntax, which is you specify four values, horizontal offset, vertical offset, blur, and then the, or the radius of the shadow, and then the color of the shadow itself. The end result for the most part between box shadow and drop shadow is going to be very similar, almost, no, almost, no, not, ah. the end result will be very similar with very little differences between what the box shadow provides and the drop shadow provides in terms of the shadow itself. Now there is one important detail though. The drop shadow filter is hardware accelerated which means that the GPU, the graphical processing unit that is responsible for all the visuals on our devices, that will be the one doing all the heavy lifting, which almost always means you get much better, smoother performance than having our more traditional CPU handle all of the animation and the, the changes. Now, use the DevTools, double check to make sure that as part of you doing this, you don't create too many what are known as compositor layers. Now, don't worry about it if you don't know what this means. Just measure the performance. If you find that applying this filter to like say a thousand elements is being very problematic, then that probably means you're creating too many compositor layers. It may not be a good idea, but if you're applying it to a handful of elements, again, measure and see what works for you and your typical types of devices your customers will be using to double check to make sure nothing too crazy is going on here. Now, we can keep talking about drop shadows and the filter and all the cool things there, but really it's a lot more fun to actually play along and see how some of this actually is applied. And so go ahead and go to this URL. It'll take you to CodePen, where you'll see an example that looks exactly like this. Now you can sit back and follow along passively, or you can also try to get your hands wet and see how this all works by actively following along as well. No right or wrong answer. Use whatever you feel comfortable with right now. Now this example is pretty simple in that there's a box, you know, div class box. Let me zoom in a bit so you can see all the text more clearly. And it has some styles associated with it. And these styles allow it to be centered on the screen perfectly vertically and horizontally. It uses the, you know, use the flex box in this case, I have a separate video that covers centering an element perfectly on the page. So not gonna go into detail there. But the big thing is that this box has a width and height of 200 pixels, has a border radius of 10 pixels, gives that nice rounded edge as a background color that gives it this pink magenta looking color. Now, what I wanna do though, is go ahead and specify a drop shadow and I wanna animate this as well. And so what I wanna do is animate my drop shadow when I'm hovering over the element. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in dot box, hover, and then the volume I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use filter, drop shadow, and I'm gonna set zero pixels, zero pixels, 50 pixels, of, of, of the, the radius for the shadow itself. And let's give it a dark color, a dark gray. So have triple three. All right, now let me go and hover over the element. And when I hover over it, notice that you can see a drop shadow appearing behind the scenes, which is, which is great. Now let's go ahead and animate it. I'm gonna go ahead and maximize the CSS view here so you can see more of it. And what I'm gonna specify for a box right here is, I wanna first specify a transition transition, filter, 0.2 seconds, and it's gonna have it ease out. This is just a typical transition that specifies that the filter property will be what I will be animating. I'm gonna hover over this, notice what you see. You see that the, the drop shadow animates in very smoothly and cleanly. Now, there's one extra thing that you may or may not wanna do, and again, it goes back to how you feel the performance is on the particular device you're doing. Now, one of the things that you can always do is give your browser a heads up that this is an element that's going to be animated 
and so there may be some extra optimizations you might want to do. Now typically one thing we've often done is by specifying a value like translate z and pushing something into the z, layer, z index which automatically forces hardware acceleration, creates its own layer and automatically does the right thing. And so again the effect isn't really noticeable. So this is what you might have seen traditionally in what you can do and this is a completely fine approach in being able to force hardware acceleration, force the creation of a new layer to make performance better. Now, the more modern approach is used to will change property. And this property you could specify which of the various things you're animating. In this case, I'm actually animating the filter. So I'm specifying will change, the filter property so it's going to be modified. And so I'm telling the browser, heads up, you might need to deal with the filter property specially to make sure that the animation is really smooth. Majority of the time, what happens behind the scenes is the same as transform translate z zero. A new layer gets created, it gets hardware accelerated, it forces it. But there may be times when that may not be the best option for you to do. And your browser is really smart about what to do and not to do. And so there's a little bit of magic here. You gotta trust the browser to do the right thing. But specify will change filter just as a sanity check to make sure that when you do hover over it, on whatever device you're on, the right thing happens. And so with that, you just saw a very quick overview of how to use the drop shadow filter to create animation that creates a drop shadow that really looks pretty cool when in this case you hover over it but you can imagine using a keyframe and having the shadow change its capabilities at all the various percentage points so a lot of th things for you to explore there and so if you have any questions on this or any other topic please visit formatgroup.com or i and others would be happy to help you out with your drop shadow animation questions or any questions in general having to do with web development lastly if you like this video tell your friends and enemies all about it i cover a lot of topics around how to basically create web content. So hit subscribe to be notified of all the things. Follow me at Krupa for bite-sized updates on Twitter and other places at Krupa points to me on web topics usually, but other interesting fun things. And lastly, if you like watching videos, if you like reading articles in your browser, buy my book. I have a lot of books on a variety of topics. In this case, Creating Web Animations by O'Reilly is a book that covers a lot of these animation topics in greater detail. So check it out if you're so inclined. And with that, I will see you all next time.